Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Following the lead of many other shows, this year's East LA Cape is going digital. The East Los Angeles Comic Book Art and Pop Culture Expo, or CAPE for short, was founded in 2016 by a group of pop culture and comic book fans who grew up in East LA. Headed by Peter J. Malini, who owns Nostalgic Books and Comics in San Gabriel, California, the show is dedicated to creating community and bringing together artists and vendors from our surrounding neighborhoods so that we can all enjoy the art that our community has to offer and to connect you to independent artists so that you can support their work. This is our 11th episode of our Virtual Artist Alley, where we will be highlighting our community of artists and vendors. Dan Bridges and Emily McGinnis are a creative power couple with 45 years of experience between them in creating great content. Dan is a U.S. Army veteran, screenwriter, actor, former stuntman, as well as the writer for The Zombie Game. You can see his comedy web series, The Fall Dude, a four-time official film festival selection online. Emily worked for Boom Studios on shows like Swamp Murders and for YouTube royalty, FBE. She also self-published a few books, including Dead Stinky Animals A through Z and a full-length graphic novel called Ties. She is also a ScreenCraft short screenplay semifinalist. Thank you Hello. so much for joining us. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you very much. So uh, let's start with, uh, I guess, the basic one is, is how did you guys get into, um, I guess, art? Yeah, uh, well, so this one writes, yeah. so we barely call that art. Oh, uh, okay. yes, thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. No, but I actually went to the Savannah College of Art and Design and uh, tricked my parents into uh, getting me a degree in comic books. So... It was uh, because the animation program had closed the year that I got there. <laughs> and I realized I wanted to draw and tell stories and comics was uh, the best medium for that. So I've been doing comics, wow, for like over a decade in the background, I think now. Yeah, I, um, I, I never really actually got into comics until I was in the army. And then I really got into, I mean, like, I really got into comics. Like, uh, my favorite, of course, were Hulk and Wolverine and stuff like that. And then um, I went, a, I can't draw to save my life. I cannot draw a stick figure. I cannot draw, I cannot draw at all. Um, when I was younger, I, I had this thing. I was like an artist without a talent, right? I, I had no ability to actually say anything um, with, uh, a, a personal uh, and then I ended up actually I started to um I started to act and do plays and weird stuff like that and then I ended up uh from that I started to write and then I wrote something and she was like hey this this would be a really awesome graphic novel and so that's kind of and then she started to adapt it and put it into form and and here we are. Yeah. So we're all our combined experience. Like I went on the comic book convention circuit for a long time. I worked for Boom Studios, like all that type of stuff. We're all channeling it into our new book and uh, trying to make the best of a uh, COVID 2020 here. Yeah. Got my new haircut. <laughs> <laughs> nice COVID haircut. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and we found a, we found a, just an absolutely amazing artist. Um, that was kind of our, you know, we were, we were searching for kind of a feel for the book and a lot of the, um, a lot, we had that idea of like a lot of black and whites and a lot of shading and just really simple stuff like that. Uh, you know, cause mostly it was an independent kind of a thing. And then we got this one submission from this guy, Pablo, and it totally threw us. Um, and I think that this is where like being an actual, an artist in our, in our own right and understanding and seeing like potential, cause it wasn't something that we even thought of, like that kind of style, that kind of, um, you know, we didn't know if he could actually 
do what we wanted him to do because of he had such a, a an, an amazing air of ambiance and like like feel and and aura but like we didn't know if he could do the action and like the gritty like you know like and because he actually paints with light and so it, it's a very like painterly style and uh we kind of had to transition from becoming just artists to like producers and editors on a book as well which has been interesting for yeah. this project yeah that was actually what i was going to ask because the aesthetic looks like it's it's like paintings yeah yeah so, does he actually hand paint it or is that just the, the style that he does on the like the ipad and stuff yeah uh no, he he digitally paints okay um and he's uh but he does go through the normal like comic process of doing like uh pencil sketches underneath and like building it up and then and then paint digitally painting on top yeah, i'm just amazed i'm just amazed that like there's a figure because i would just <laughs> like what i do is just it's absolutely pathetic and you're like i got i had to you know do it like a sketch and i just like oh yeah and you can have this guy and it's like what are you doing stop just to stop your embarrassment we let him write all the dialogue yes. that is what i'm good at i'm really good at that and and but uh, it was very interesting to kind of um, step back because, you know, I guess I, I look at him as like a cinematographer also, mm -hmm. not just an artist, like an actual, like somebody who draws a panel. And he comes up with these angles or whatnots and tries different, like, sh like these amazing, like overheads. And I, you know, it's like, and you see this, as opposed to just like a straight panel. And I'm always just fascinated. And then, um, you know, sometimes you have to pull him back and sometimes you get him just like allow him to go and, and being able to see like, and not like squash on, I, I don't know. I, I consider him like a genius. And so you don't, you want to give like, He'll be happy to hear. Yeah, yeah exactly. He'll be like, eh. <laughs> but you know, it's like you know, like a, like an artist, and you just you want to be able to like, you know, I guess it's kind of like uh, I, I put it in the like in with Joker and um, uh, Joaquin Phoenix. It's like sometimes you have to. It's like that guy is really good, and sometimes you just gotta kind of like push him this way or push him that way because it's like if he's off on his own, maybe it's like a little little chaos sometimes, and then you're just like get it back into the, like the rhythm of the story or whatnot. And yeah, so it's been a really amazing process to see something that I wrote a while ago. Um, and that I actually really love, uh, come to light. Uh, yeah. yeah. We got so lucky that we found like a really great collaborator who is able to really take what we've tried to set up and, our themes and the premise and all that and turn it into something really amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, he takes his time. <laughs> <laughs> you, get the th you get the three, right? Yeah. There's the three things you get two. It's like fast, cheap and or good, right? You can only have two. And so he is not, I would not say fast. He is extremely good. Yeah. Um, so we have, we've had to slow down our like, projections and um you know we we were going to go on the on the circuit this year so <laughs> ready to do all sorts yeah. of conventions so we're super happy to be here at least a digital <laughs> comic convention <laughs> we were ready to do a bunch but yeah you know and then this hit and so we don't know really how you know how that's all gonna like pan out in yeah. the next you know year or so because it's, we are wrapping up and it is going to be you yeah know. it's been crazy we've been excited to see that at least some comic shops are still able to stay open yeah. and like service like longtime fans and be able to do you know pull boxes and ship things and all that because you know at least it's it's helping to keep the spirit yeah. of everything alive and at least a lot of people are trying to pivot to like digital things because you know our original plan was like 
I have a coloring book that I drew that goes with the graphic novel. And like we had, we've been trying to do some podcasts to start, but like really the center of the plan was like, let's go to comic shops. Let's like yeah. interact with people. Let's, you know, have fun. Like I wanted drink a, beer. <laughs> I wanted a, like a hardcover inlay book. You know, I wanted that. I, I you know, and if I collector edition, you know, it's just like you know, just that kind of, you know, it's like, it's, it, you know, it, 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 that's I just wanted that to be able to hold in my hand, like you know, we made this. This is like it was something that we created, and I, you know, digital, digital, everything is, you know, it's okay. Um, it's but, not the same as in your hands and it's scary because we've spent almost like two years probably like way longer <laughs> way longer than we should have <laughs> trying to get this hopefully beautiful baby out but like there's something about being able to see people's like faces when they read it and like interact with them and that whole convention experience of like talking to fans and like talking to people that like we said, we're grateful for at least doing like digital things, but we're just. I think everybody misses it. Yeah. I think everybody misses that, that shared, ex I, you know, and all, and, and I think that's, it, it goes beyond just like comics. I think that that's why everybody's so freaked out about like, uh, like sports and movies and everything. It's like that shared communal experience of going to a place and, and having something in your hand and being excited by things and yeah you're you're it's like oh that's cool but you it's like you know click 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 as opposed to it's like whoa that's awesome it's a 120 page like yeah book i mean are we gonna be larping in the streets here eventually <laughs> like so what do you mean you're not already <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. That's just those are my that's my, that's my special underwear. So yeah, I'm I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's. I think you know everyone has a similar sentiment. Most of the feedback that we've been getting from all of the artists is essentially that they miss the circuit, they miss the fans, they miss the face to face. So you know the the cash twenty two to that is that's probably a little bit of why, you know, we're seeing such a rise in cases now, like everyone is so done and now they're like human interaction. So I think as soon as all of this is kind of like settled, the comic book circuit, I think is going to come back with a vengeance because everyone is going to crave the tangible. Yeah. Like human experience so hard that I think that, yeah. yeah. Um, that be your back to the epic. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of, uh, I hope, you know, uh, what can survive, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, that's why we're, we're trying so hard to support local. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge thing right now. And, um, you know, restaurants and whatnots and sh shops and whatever you can to, sh to do local. And I think that that's something that we should have been doing all the time, you know, supporting yeah. small businesses promoting you know it's like because because it's just better um and it's it's the life lifeblood of our communities um you know because the money is it's it, you know that's if you i mean god that it was just this interesting this um i saw this it's just completely off the subject and all that kind of stuff oh good <laughs> yeah that, i'll just go off this but there was just this um this gentleman at a, a meeting about having police live in the communities that they serve. And it was, you are spending like $6 billion to fund another city and other cities because those people don't live here. They don't retire here. They don't do anything here versus reinvesting that money in people in this area. And I think that that sentiment is the same with restaurants and comic shops and everything that it goes to, it's like, you know, we have to, we have to do better on that sense. And we have to, it's, you know, I think it's very comforting to like be, and I think even that's what like a lot of comic shops are. It's like, they're comforting because it's like you're that everyone is kind of, they're, they're similar, but they're different, right? You know, they're, they're unique in their oddities and weirdness and peccadillos and fun but it's like 
people go, it's like, oh, I go to a new new town and I go to the Cheesecake Factory because I'm used to it. But it's like all those little mom and pops places are the lifeblood of that place. And that's where we should be going. And so um, that's, and with art and with all of that stuff, I think that if we, we really need to, um, you know, like. I'm not sad at all that like, large businesses might be failing at this point like it's time if we can make Barnes and Noble like an actual franchise thing where like actual people can own it because it's not a giant corporation anymore you know if like if this helps people see that like you don't have to go on Amazon for comics like you can actually go talk to people who know about it and have fun and find something new and like help you actually and get see, into comics and see something that and experience something you wouldn't have experienced i think that yeah. that's the biggest thing it's like because that's where the uniqueness of that community of whatever it is and what i love about you know it's like everybody that's good at something whether it's being a chef or knowledgeable about art or however it is it's that it's like, oh, do you like that? Here, try this. And it's that next step that can open up an entire arena of things. I mean, that's how our book is going to get discovered. I mean, we, 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 yeah. had, I had no plans to make this into a book, like none. And um, I, I wrote it as a screenplay. I was like, I was really excited about it. And, and I said, you have to, because this is, perfect for the medium it, like and it and it's and it's uh, and it's and it, we found the perfect artist and he's like and he's my cinematographer and he creates this like it's better than i could have hoped like it's better than i thought it could be and, and i i'm shocked and i would never have done that without her and we were able to rally like people from the community to actually look at it as a comic and make sure it was like worthy of being in that medium and like engendered to that that medium so it wasn't just like oh we adapted a screenplay you know it really deserves to be yeah. a comic and it deserves to be in that medium yeah and that's the the coolest part i i think about it is that um being it, it lends it it's it's better than like if i made it as if it got made as like a two month uh, million dollar two million dollar movie this looks better this is better yeah. than that and it's because it, it still has the themes it still has all those things that i wanted to say with it because those were the things that were that i was you know i i can't write anything without some sort of um like meaning behind it like i really want to write a horror movie but i just can't because then just you not also good at it. get zombie explosions yeah exactly <laughs> so it's like i wanted to i wanted to take like these themes of like uh i'm a veteran and uh and i was there was this big push about um like just being kind of used up and you know the 22 and all of this other stuff that was happening and I wanted to explain the 22. Oh, so the 22 are the 22 um, soldiers that commit suicide per day. Um, and that's something that's uh, extremely uh, important to me in, in veterans issues. And, but I, I took that, it's like I was utilizing that theme about being used by others. And like, there are other people that are used by others a lot. And, well, so, and it was important to tell a veteran story that was not about a veteran just PTSD. having PTSD in a supermarket. You he know, was a character. He's a character he's, he's, in a yeah. in a story that is not centered around that. And he's right. Like the rest of the characters reflect that we have a a black football player who is used up by like the college football system. You know, we have an Asian American student who has a tiger mom, you know, we have a schizophrenic artist who is like trying to make her way through college and that kind of thing. Yeah. It was very important to me to put people in this world that aren't really reflected most of the time in a lot of ways. Um, because, uh, we always just get kind of the run of the run of the mill 
And that was something. And I also used the, the concept, like, because I, I wrote this during the Bernie Sanders, the first Bernie Sanders, <laughs> Hillary Clinton situation. with The, the first 1%. world is Bernie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is when, this was back before everything went to hell. And we were all just like arguing about like, you know, it's like, oh, somebody should pay more taxes. But um, it was that idea of like this, the uber rich just like using people as pawns. And that's another aspect of this book that I really wanted to keep and I thought would be lost if like I sold it to somebody else. And it was, these people are using these, these students, these just normal people as players in their game. And I thought that that was a great allegory for, you know, what's happening, who, what's going on in our, our society and, and how we are being utilized against each other and how they're just kind of, they know more, they're playing the game, they know that it's a game and everybody else is just kind of like, what, what the fuck's going on? And, and as we know with all good zombie stories, the enemy is not really the zombie like the enemy is the people that that you're with and so we were we he was also able to like take zombies and turn them slightly because yeah. the zombies are made like through a drug that's like poured down on people it's like a party rave kind of a thing so it's like everybody thinks they're doing like x and it's like Ooh, but it's like a drug and so and some people are immune to the drug so it it, it creates this so as opposed to a pandemic, which we knew could not happen. <laughs> right. right? Uh, and but, definitely too on the nose now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and, and the pandemic aspect, it's like, it's, it's big, it's giant, it's like overwhelmingly everything, right? And I wanted to make it contained because, uh, so I- But wait, the thing uh, that it also allows us to do is that we're able to like have uh, all of our favorite like horror movies and like- zombie tropes in there yeah. as like a nod and a wink so like each level is a different type of zombie so you have like the slow zombies the rage zombies you know the dehydrated zombies and so we get to play with like all of those those awesome things about pop culture yeah and as opposed to it's just so like one thing about a zombie movie which it's like halfway through or something you figure out that that's their the, the main weakness or that's like for instance in train to busan it's it's like they can't see in the dark and you're like oh shit now we can figure this out and now we so it's like each time you go to a different level in in this zombie game it's different and so you don't you don't get to like what you the, the lesson you learned in the last one now you it's not the same lesson it's something else so it's and a so, literal game yeah it's a literal, it's a literal game, game. Oh, so it's not just like the the game of, like it's a literal no, game. No, no, no. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, um, so there's that aspect of saw in it yeah. where there's somebody who creates this and makes this and so that other people can play this. And so that's one of the things about the, like the super and uber rich situation is that yeah. they're kind of playing a live action video game with people and zombies. Yeah. And so um, our main characters are kind of immune to the drug because they're broken and uh so there's a there's a thing about ecstasy that ecstasy doesn't work on about 30 percent of people because um they're on other uh, brain drugs and so i kind of took that concept and especially in college because there are so many different kinds of like you know um uh disorders in college and stuff so there's a lot of people that are immune to it and so i took that concept and the reason why I even came up with that is because uh, I read a book called um, The Girl with All the Gifts. And amazing book, terrible movie. <laughs> terrible, terrible movie. Um, but the book was so amazing because it, it showed that I could, that zombies can be, and it, and, it, and it explained it to me that zombies can be different. So zombies don't have to be the thing that we always think of. Kind of like, like what we like yeah like how we think of like when uh, 28 days later came out and it was like different it was just like oh my god a different yeah. type of zombie it was like oh my god so it was like that kind of change well you start to change. wonder if there's any anywhere to go 
with like some of these genres, genres yeah. after a certain point like we've we've seen horror for so long at this point like are there there's always like good interior stories to tell but like are there new things to say to say about zombies and use them yeah. as like use a them way as, to tell a story use them as the the means and that's what i th i think i came up with a, a great idea and i was um because i i was searching for something for a very long time because i just i i, I wanted to write something and it, it didn't and it was supposed to be a single action, you know, single location horror movie, and it turned it into kind of like uh, an action zombie it, movie. It's, it's almost, but it's almost it, that. <laughs> but it, it 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 is what it's supposed to be. Yeah, and that's what's cool about it is that um, I really, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very proud of the themes and and the overall concept that came about, and then I'm actually just amazed that she was able to like take that and. And fostered into this medium and then this became just awesome the whole uh, that's amazing yeah i mean it it's pretty cool to be like wow <laughs> the part we love the most about comics is being able to see it actually like come to life on your own it's an artist who's like bringing your vision to mm -hmm. life like you're seeing how panels complement you know, word balloons and it's all coming oh, together man. as then, a story. Yeah, and then oh, Lucas. I know. Oh, God, what a, what a. We, that Lucas was a accidental find, but he's, he's doing some sort of crazy wizardry over there where like he's making things half transparent and he is also like a print setter. So he knows all these like weird, intricate, like print setting things, but like yeah. he, he nailed it. He nailed that like temperament and just giving like more life to balloons and the sound effects and stuff like that so we just we got lucky that we found good people yeah. to collaborate with a little bit of a follow-up question this is because i feel like you guys tapped on something that's a little bit of my not a complaint that i have about zombie movies but it's always like so oh yeah how, like how do zombies work though like is it a disease is it like some ethereal supernatural thing is it like stardust and so i want to hear a little bit more about like what you're talking about like the drug or the rain that turns people into zombies so where did that come from and what like in your world what's the mechanism behind well I, I, yeah like oh, I, wait, so there oh. there is a there's a game master yes. who who is putting on the games and it's implied through the story that there have been like more games before this and that there will be like maybe more in the future. And so someone's actually like running all of this and mm -hmm. then he is created this this thing. Yeah, and it it started off by like once I read Girl with All the Gifts, I was kind of trying to figure out a way like can somebody create a zombie? And then I started doing research. And so these they're not like it doesn't doesn't um transfer if you get bit. Like, it's not like a, a biting thing or anything like that. It's it's literally a drug. And then, like I was saying before, that some people are just immune to the drug. And so, and that's because of other drugs. And that's, you know, that they're on. And so that comes up in the story. Like, you know, our guy has PTSD. So he's on, you know, PTSD medication. And uh, our, our girl is on antipsychotics. And those things counteract. And I... I found that the ecstasy aspect of it is that it doesn't work with certain people about 30% because of other drugs. And I started doing research and I started looking at it. And then for some reason I was like, well, shit, if I can make them, I can make any type of zombie I want because now it's just a chemical composition. And so now I'm not limited. I'm not limited to one. I can do whatever I want. And so, and the worst part or best part is that they're still human. Yeah. And they can turn back. And so they are fodder. They are so literally added hope to the zombies yeah. and, and, and added horror when they, when you find that out to the person. And so you're, you're sitting there and you're like, oh my God, 
these people could be people again. Yeah, because and that's the that's another thing it's about one of the weirdest parts about horror movies is you start to disassociate, especially as you get further and further. You know, like I mean, how long has Walking the Walking Dead comics been going on at this point? Like, you don't see the they, they're not even human anymore. They're just like walking skeletons yeah. and stuff. And it, we wanted to make sure that it was like a horror book, and that you feel that horror, that you're 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 not disassociating like the zombies or the monsters with the humanity. It, it's it is the it is the worst part of like what's happening in the game. Is, is that, that, that they're real people yeah. being used to do this? And the rich people are not just hunting like our survivors and the main characters that we go through. They are still hunting human, like all humans, like throughout the game. Yeah, so it's it's pretty. I I don't know. I, I don't know how I came up with certain aspects of it, but I was kicking it around for so long, and then I was like, well, if somebody could do this, who would do that? And then I was like, well. There are people, there are a lot of people that would do this. And who doesn't love the sprinkler scene in Blade? Yeah, I mean, and that's where it's like, you know, and so you're, you're just, you're, you go to this party. So you're, you're literally, you go to this amazing, like warehouse, warehouse party and it's like yeah. thumping music, right? And you're just like, yeah, this is awesome. And then all of a sudden the, the rain starts popping down and people are like, yeah. And they got their, like, you know, it's, they got their, um, you know, the glow, glow sticks, sticks and whatever, and, <laughs> and they're like going crazy. And then all of because a sudden, because it's an end of the world zombie apocalypse party. So it's like people come and they're dressed up as zombies already. <laughs> exactly yeah. right. And then they get, then some of them turn, and then they start attacking other people. And you're like, what? The, what's happening? Is this the party? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is this part of? This is just a part of the thing. And so. But making it a zombie apocalypse party also let us uh, create like classic zombie sets. So like the first level is the CDC. The second level is like the farmhouse. The third level is the shopping mall. Yeah. And then the last level is a giant like mash unit, unit. kind of thing. And so um, you have these different like tropes that we can play with. Mm -hmm. And that was really fun. And so once I kind of like, I was like, okay, what, what movies do I really, what kind of things do I really like? I like saw like, right. You know, it's like you have these layers of puzzles puzzles, and it's like, so it's not just, I got to kill these things. It's like, I got, I got other things I got to do while I'm here and I'm being like, I have to hunt and hunt. And it's like, what's going on, what's really happening. And then I got an extra level of now instead of just a like, I mean, that's what Negan was. I don't, I, you know, it's like once you get to a certain level, it's the other people that are horrible, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like you got these zombies and then you got these other people and you, are they friendly? Or are they not? Who, who knows who's on whose side? What's going on? Then you got that stuff going on. And I don't know. I was really. And then, yeah, we didn't even get, we didn't talk about the puzzles, but yeah, yeah. then there's puzzles for like each level to get to the next level um and one is a a philosophy puzzle <laughs> i got a I got a degree in philosophy so it's, it's pretty much why i probably thought up all this weird stuff right? <laughs> we got to use your degree <laughs> a little bit yeah yeah uh and so like if you ever ever read what is it wittgenstein wittgenstein yeah, yeah. Wittgenstein. You'll uh, you'll be able to figure out the puzzle. Yeah, so yeah. everybody brush up before yeah, you exactly. open up <laughs> open our book. So there's that, and there's like you know there's physical puzzles, and then there's just like you know um, really simple like video game thing. It's like oh my god, it's like oh I need keys, you know. It's like that kind of stuff. Yes. But each it, it it adds a layer of like wait a second, it's it, it's not just running around bashing in zombie heads or whatever. It it keeps you in this like world of this game and then pablo got to add oh yeah probably geez. about like God. 30 or 40 easter eggs so yeah. you get to see I we don't say, know them all either yeah. like he just he's just like putting <laughs> stuff in um uh, so you get to it's like horror easter eggs pop culture easter eggs because like his panels are so rich 
like you can zoom you can zoom into them that's the only case i'd make for reading this on digital because you get to like yeah. zoom into it but the the only one i'll give away because it is also in the coloring book i made was that he added a waldo <laughs> from where's waldo <laughs> um, which i which was too good for me to let pass so i'm like i have to put it in the coloring book as well because it was it was just so funny like a waldo with like a spear like pipe coming out of his shoulder it was great like beanie and everything yeah yeah yeah, yeah. there's quite a few of those um I, I see this is where I had to, I um oh it's a little dark there but uh, it's like he put in <laughs> he put in like uh Michael Jackson thriller and I was like no no you can't do that it's like I was like I, after what's going on with Michael Jackson I was like uh, we, let's change that a little bit yeah. it's like it's like I don't know uh, uh but yeah so there are quite a few of those things in there uh some are some are unique to us some are unique to like I mean like he he really wanted to have like, uh, like I don't know if we want to talk about the political thing. Or thing. Oh I sure, know. yeah. Like he, um, he's from Argentina, and he said that uh, they wear it's green, right? Green bandanas, like as part of like a reproductive rights campaign. And he asked us like if he could put that On one of the into the book. In, on like one of our characters is is wearing a bandana for the whole for the whole book so we were like yeah like we want this to mean something to you and like yeah. this is a partnership and like we I, we support yeah i think that that was where giving like um the reins and letting yeah him come up with ideas yeah and you know and and also being flexible enough in our own way of like letting you know i this is, just, you know, it's like we talk about this and like, you know, it's just a horrible saying of killing babies. But like, you know, it's like you kill, you just have to give up certain things. Like you're, you have to like let these ideas go or little things that you love. And, and sometimes you're like, oh, I really wanted that. Or, or this was, I, this was my idea, but this is not, this is a collaboration of multiple things. And yes, we, you know, it's, it's not humongous and it's, it's, and it's between the three of us and four of us, but you have to like see the genius within what that other person sees. And then sometimes you have to pull back the, like, and, and press on the brake a little bit and be like, no, mm -hmm. that's, no, I need this. And then is it important over. to the story enough to like ar argue it or argue for it? And it, it very much is a conversation between yeah. all of us. And, you know, cause we want to, we want to treat our artists with respect as we are, you know, both artists as well. Like we want those ideas. Like I had suggested as a funny joke that we, they they come toward the end of a book into like a big giant storeroom to get get uh, ready for like the last battle, kind of cabin in the woods style. So like they, I was like, oh, you have to include toilet paper. Like it's funny. You have to like <laughs> during quarantine, like you you it's have like to a have wall of toilet paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so he's like, oh yeah, okay, okay. And it, and so he sent he sent the page back, and I was like oh no toilet paper it's like okay well you know it was it was a joke it wasn't it wasn't like vital to the panel and then the next set of pages he sends so our our heroes and our villains get separated and our villains are in a separate room that has no no supplies because they're supposed to not be prepared for like this last level except for five rolls of toilet paper <laughs> And I was like, you know what, Pablo? That's genius. Yeah, like, it's I, like, yeah, like that nugget, and then he took it and and ran with it. And I think that that's what a lot of this has been. It's like I came up with something, and then she ran with it. Yeah. And then we brought it to him, and then he ran with it. And then like, and so like with Lucas, she's like, so he, how about this and that? It's like, give him a shot. Like, like, like see, it's like, go big and like and see if it works and if it doesn't we can say no you know it's like that's the coolest part i think is that um you know giving giving people an opportunity to express something within themselves through the art because yeah. i did 
And so like each person I want in that to have some ownership of that, as opposed to just like, yeah, I wrote it. I, oh yeah, I, I, I ain't this, that's fine. It's like, I wanted it, I want it to mean something to them because that means they care about it. And that means it's just better. Yeah. And we hope that it comes through like when people yeah. read it, that they, yeah. you know, a little part of them is reflected in it as well. Yeah. So you said the comic book actually started about two years ago and, and now, you know, we're at the point where we're having toilet paper references is how much has like, you know, 2020 influenced the plot line or like, do we see murder hornets now? And do we, <laughs> <laughs> Um, like how, how much has 2020 kind of either deviated, influenced, or kind of added its own, I mean, it's affected everything. Like has the the storyline or art or the Easter eggs, how much has it injected itself into? Well, I'll, I'll say this, like Pablo has, has even improved since the beginning of the book. So I would say his panels are even like richer at the, at, toward the end of the book. And uh, so that, that has been a difference since this has gone on so, for like such a, yeah. a long period of time. But I, I think we also chose like a lot of themes that would be universal for a long time. Yeah, I mean, we could just change it to a COVID party in Florida and I yeah. think everything would be about the same. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, people being stupid or people being trash people. Yeah. Like pretty much transcends. Well, unless like, they're oh, buying the book and then they're fucking <laughs> yes, brilliant. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it, it, I don't think that one of the things is um, I, I I don't think that a lot of these themes, I, and that's why I think that I hit on something is just that they're, um, they might change, but there will always be like, you know, the, there'll always be like people that use other people for their own fodder. There just will be. And so that theme and people that have been kind of used up will be a theme. And those kinds of aspects will always be around. Now, who is doing the using and who is not those things can change but the theme itself will still be there which is unfortunate um in a very unfortunate aspect of our of our society but i think unfortunately um, the biggest thing that's changed is just how we yeah. might be able to reach audiences you know like yeah. we, we like we said at the beginning we what we love that connection and like talking to people so yeah i mean i get totally nerded out when i was like talk about the book it's, like, <laughs> it's exciting to me because it's really it's really like uh, um it's like like just visually it's stunning and then like i it, it's just really cool and then there's the aspect of like like what i wanted to, what is wanted to say with it and so then it's like so it's it's not like just a, it's a crappy thing that I wrote, you know, and drew and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, look at that. It's like, no, this is badass. Take a look at it. If you have any questions, please let me know. Cause I, it's very exciting to me. Um, he could talk about it for hours, which is the best part. Because well, I'm sure. She, yeah. She's like, <laughs> for hours. <laughs> Yeah, but I I think this is maybe even the first opportunity we've gotten to really actually like geek out about it because yeah. a lot of people like just ask, you know, they they have their agenda of like what they want to ask if that's like, you know, the horror genre or whatever, but like that's the best part about like the geek and nerd community is that like you actually get to hardcore like nerd out <laughs> on, on what you love. Yeah. Well, there was something you mentioned earlier that, that I thought was interesting that you kind of like had members of uh, like comic book community kind of vetted and go through it and to yeah. see what was kind of worthy of it. And I think that's, you know, for a, a industry slash community slash kind of space that you do have just people that are just passionate about, you know, it's, it is a nice touch to try to get that like investment from, you know, like, are, are we going to, because you have such a huge injection of people now using this as a vehicle, yeah. right. For a lot of things. And you have a lot of people that have been involved in the community for such a long time that it's like, it does kind of feel like, Oh man, like there's all these people that are not really appreciating 
what it is. And so I love that you guys put that effort into being like, yes, we want to appreciate well, and get vetted. And, you know, that yeah. was, that was all on her. And, and I mean, working at boom studios, I, I, I saw people already entering the market at that, at that point that didn't really love the medium or like understand the, the medium because I mean, it's kind of a clicky closed thing because it, it is a, it's a closed thing. Like in order to do it right, you really have to understand it. And we all love it so much that we want people to really do it right. Not just as like a passing thing to make money off of. And, and even I having like worked in the industry was still got tagged a couple of times by our partners that was like, no, that's a film thing. That's a film thing. Like make sure you're not, you're not doing X, Y, Z, you know, because you, you want to, you want to have like the double page spreads like you oh, want to yeah. play with like Pablo has like a fisheye panel in there that's like amazing that that you don't see get to see in comics like there are uh that that scene we well there actually is a scene where you get to see one of the zombies turn back to human and it's one of Pablo and our letter Lucas's favorite panels yeah. because it kind of like fans out and you get to see that that transition in the dialogue like fans out it's, with it. It's it's one of the the most horrible, awesome moments in the book, yeah. um, because it 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 basically shows you what's go really happening, and they did such a and and it's there's just it's it's so like it's so simple and the words are so like, and this is, this is where like the, the, the dialogue got me. Cause like I was, you know, cause then it was like, Oh, I had this idea. And then it was, they took that idea and made it better. And mm -hmm. then it was like, then they, then they, they had this whole, and I was like, Oh my God. And then like tweaking it and it's like, okay, just say that. And then it's just yeah. heartbreaking. That's and one of the best parts about comics is like, you have to get the dialogue down so precise and that's a huge difference uh, from film yeah. that like a lot of film is talking. It's heads talking, it's people talking, it's talking with pictures, it's narration, all yeah. sorts of talking. And you have to be very precise and exact in comics to make sure you're not covering the art. It's not too talky. Like, you know, you're not just like reading, reading, reading. And if you can juxtapose your word balloons with what's happening in the panel even better yeah. that's like a whole like different level of the art and we you know we did our best <laughs> yeah that was that was the hard, that was very difficult for me yeah like the transition because i had never you know it's like i i have some friends that write comics but i had never written something like that so i had i had to give her that and let her adapt and then there were certain things it's like, well, why can't you do that? It's like, and it's like, well, that's not how it works. <laughs> and so like we had to, I, I had to adjust that, but it's like, oh, I want that. That's something important to me or certain. It's, and then we well, had to, we had to collaborate on that. Right. And, and that's, then she got the other people involved. And, but that's like, the thing when, when I forced him to like condense that oh, down God, Jesus into like the best nugget it could be like it he it came out great because you have to think about it you have to really like be impactful with what you're saying and he was able to like turn it into like a really great bite so you know even if, even though he wasn't oh. and he had read you know a ton of comics but it's never the same as actually no. trying to make one no. right no. so but he he was able to like turn on a dime and once once he understood like what it should be like that dialogue just got down to like right into the meat of it, it was great thanks i'm so into the idea of zombies turning back it just adds yeah. <laughs> such a messed up like mind job layer of because it just it raises so much questions just like so is there permanent damage? Do they go back to normal? Right. Like what happens? Do they yeah. stay evil? Do they go back to being good? Do people know that there's hope? And if they, they find out there's hope and then like, what if they already killed? Cause you're right. That disconnection. And that's always a little bit of like my complaint with like zombie movies. It's like, it's so easy to be like, okay, when that trope of like that moment where you're like, but it's my loved one. And everyone's like, but they're dead now. And you have to shoot them yeah. in the head. 
exactly yeah, yeah. One, you know and now it's like oh crap there's hope they might come back to my lips so do i put them in a cage do i tie them up do i like do i yeah. just put pillows around them like <laughs> yeah and 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 there's also a game master that is going to like destroy everything at a certain amount of time because he yeah. doesn't want to get caught so there's like that a- added element of like you know, you're on a timer. You're on a timer, and that's oh, man. that's like, yeah. So it's, like, <laughs> it's it's that's one of the the really things that it's like. I don't think we get to really explore that too much, but we we just hit on it enough that I think that it it adds an element of like that reality of mm-hmm. like we're these are people, and they're not and they're not just mindless things that you know that are just wandering around it's like they could go back but then you don't know what that means and so at the end of the book um it's kind of like just an absolute chaotic chaos right and you have it's just it it, it opens up and people are starting to change back and explosions are happening and and you get an element of like it's 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 happening and that's why it's all ending but you're like oh my god everything is everything it's going to be like um it's it's all going to get wiped away because no one wants to get caught right so it's like so all these people that might turn back are going to be eliminated anyway and so you're like oh god now it's even worse (laughs) and so that's Will anyone survive to actually give testament to like what happened? And will anybody, this is the other thing that I think is just like, will anybody even believe them? Yeah. And this is one of the things that I thought of, like, because of my, I, I am not a combat vet, but I know a lot of combat vets. And there is this aspect of, I had always wanted to write a book or write something about like, the people that kind of survived the horror movie, right? And then, like, where did they go to therapy? It's like, where did the people that survived Saw, like, go to a therapy? Like, there's no therapy group for Saw, right? You know, it's like a bunch of people sitting around, and they're like, yeah, I had to cut off my leg. And, but it's like, who would believe them? And is it worth telling? And what are, what are people going to believe? And what is the story? And that's what I, I – it's at the very end where you're just kind of like – what do we, you know, is, is, is there any, it's like, how do you deal with that now? Like, no one's going to believe that that's what happened. Cause it's, it's insane. There's no, it, some it, there, kids went to a party, got drugged up and burned the place down. Right? You know, it's like, and that's kind of, it's, that's kind of like known at the beginning that this is, you know, a few, um, a while ago, there was another party that kind of went, wrong and people died and got burned up and stuff like that so it's like that's not something unheard of so now you're like oh it was a terrorist attack or whatever it could be but how would those people that survive the walking dead then just walk back into mcdonald's the next day and just be like hey we're gonna go to get food and it's kind of that aspect of being a veteran of coming back from that kind of horrible aspect and then like trying to go back to school. And so that was how I started with that guy um, with Oz is that he is that he's that guy already. And so at the end, he's like helping the others kind of process what it is. And it's like, and then we cut to book two yeah. five <laughs> years later. <laughs> dun, 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 you know, and we're all dead yeah. because Pablo couldn't get out any more pages. <laughs> yeah, we love you, Pablo. <laughs> but that's it's very exciting. Uh, I'm sorry. No, it's good. Uh, so, so you said that well, obviously because everything is going on, uh, your convention plans are are not happening this year. Um, but you did talk about releasing it digitally. So is, is it coming out digitally like within this year or or do you have a timetable? I don't know. Like yeah. I, we're we're still I think we're really still trying to figure it out. Like we might reach out to a couple of publishers. Yeah. Um I really want I really want a book. Like I understand I a and physical. A physical because once it's digital, it's everywhere. 
and I understand and it's cool and I'm not downplaying at all, but there's just something about a book and I'd really love to be able to, um, to sell, I not just sell that. I'd like people to have my book. I know I want, you know, and like, so it's on your shelf and it's there and it's something that people can pick up and leaf through. And that to me is just really cool. And we're so close. We're so close to finishing. We're so close to finishing everything that, you know, we're hoping even if, um, even if like no one's interested that we'll like run a Kickstarter or we, we'll get it out like regardless because yeah. we, we just, we really believe in it. So we'll, we, we wanted to try to make sure we got it out to a bunch of people. And if something resembling a convention circuit can happen toward the end of the year, we'd love to do that, but we just want to make sure it gets out to as many people as we can. Yeah. So how can people find you? Like, tell us your social media or where are you on the internet or what other services that usually a lot of the artists um, are also available for like other commissions. Do you guys have other services that you offer that if people want to hit you up for that you want to tell everybody about? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can find us on Instagram at the zombie game. Uh, that's kind of like our, our main portal. Yeah. We're also on, on Facebook. Oh, at- I'm not anymore. <laughs> the the book is on Facebook. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had to go away from that. I get a little uh, I get a little testy sometimes. Uh, it's it's uh, yeah, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, we're not not doing any like art commissions or anything at the moment, but we'll post all our updates on uh, Instagram, like where you can find the coloring book and if we do a Kickstarter and uh, like any of our partners and stuff like that. So Instagram's kind of been like our main avenue. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, guys. This has been an amazing conversation about zombies and comics and. Well, I hope. And thanks for having us. Well, I, I, I hope when you get to actually take a look at the book and you're like, you know, and then you see like, you know, uh, through that conversation, be able to like, you know, rumble through and say oh that's what he was talking about yeah, yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, he did really a poor job on that <laughs> <laughs> well thank you guys it's been fun and after the video i will be showing all of you guys' links and stuff so they can find you and yeah thank you so much for joining us for the east la cape virtual artist alley thank you so thank much you. for having us bye